It's a beautiful day. We're heading out dog rocking, rock hounding. Yeah, Mars is driving and it's a beautiful day in my valley up here. It's springtime. You see the wind blowing the tall oats. It can be very, very hot this time of year. And it is not hot today. We're going to go find some unpicked gravels to pick through. Welcome to the quest for details. interesting part about this area so a lot of California is actually built out of accretion so that is where one plate sliding under the other which we have here actually actually loses little pieces of itself it it sticks along the edge as it's sliding under and it, it becomes part of the landmass it adds on to it so a lot of California has actually been um, just those pieces instead of going under that stuck on the edge. It's called accretion. We're in accretion zone It's also created a lot, a lot of uplift and a lot of folding And so those chunks of accreted land have been folded up and uh, Literally into a bunch of valleys that run north and south so this area where we're going into is one of the zones that's farthest east into the landmass that we're on. So the farthest inland of those folds that were folded up from all the tectonic action. So um, right beyond this ridge that we're going to be looking through, which is old ocean floor, hit other um, chunks of geology that are older actual pieces of California that were under like the Modoc Seaway and then you run into the Sierra Nevadas and all of that. So this is basically the last ridge of the coastal range inland from the ocean. And um, it is one of the tallest, it might be the tallest, it's what forms the Blue Ridge behind Lake Berryessa and um, the eastern side of the Great Central Valley or the western side, sorry. Um, of the Great Central Valley. So we're going into the last crack of those coastal ranges. We're going to look at all of the sedimentary rocks that are there, layer after layer. And um, in those I found twig fossils and all kinds of things. It's all old ocean floor that has moved up and moved up and is now this far inland. So that is the setting. You can see the surroundings. Um, I hope that you could hear some of this and I will let you know when we get out with a bucket of chisel and our uh, eyeglasses and start to split things open and see what we find. There's also agates, carnelian um, agate forms and regular calcetti and all of that. Sorry for the jiggly camera work. We're going to go down in our first little stay first little creekway here and look through the debris there's no actual big sedimentary cliffs here but things do wash down and just want to look through the gravels I got the fever for this spray bottle leash for the dog in case somebody shows up and our uh, rock hammer my favorite little chisel this little guy which does so many wonderful things Yep, yep, yep. Okay, and the dogs are being so good. You guys ready to go down into the water? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you can see the rich layers of Franciscan sandstone that we have. All through here, this is some of the furthest east of it that you will find, I believe. And uh, lots of things going on. Lots of uh, also intrusion of... Um, volcanic rocks and stuff mixed in with it but that's what you're looking at all the grays and tans are the different shades of sandstones and any of those could be harboring a layer that had uh, life in it there could also be 
lots of uh, lots of castings and so I'll keep my eyes open I just want to give you a general kind of starting look it's much like being at a beach but um, you know with sea cliffs falling away and sandstone and fossils but we are uh, all the way out here I remember finding before that there were certain colors of it that had the most twigs and stuff, so we'll have to rediscover that. You can see that it's literally preserved beaches, so we have like, that's the rounded sand of a former beach just still existing there, but this far inland, lifted up, and compressed and turned into rock. All sorts of stuff. Brought the spray bottle. Feels light enough to be a common oval. I think we might just knock that in half. I know that freaks some people out, but today we're doing some prospecting. So some of that's gonna be just smashing rocks. Red Jaspers. Okay, the dogs are in the water. A little bleached out part of a, a turtle shell. That's a little leg spot there. Kind of cool how this uh, big tree that burnt has all of its outer hard layers. The wood's still left there, but the inner pith is just absolutely crumbled and spilled out of it here to like a pile of puzzle bark chunks. Cool little mud pot or uh, mud rock. It's like a layered uh, instead of a sandstone, it's a mudstone, I believe, or a claystone. No nodule creature with its layers. Wow, I chipped this one. If you can get the sparkle of all of the Crystals all lined up there. There's the other half of it. That's cool. Okay, we have switched over from my phone, which just never seems to have enough memory, but I like the, uh, the zoom on and the quality of the zoom to our GoPro. So I will have to do beauty shots for some of these. And include them in spots, I think, is how we'll do it instead of a big cleanup at the end. But, let's see. This was the next thing that I had found. Which is another, obviously, like an iron stone. It's like a heavy clay layered low deposit. Feels pretty cool. And in cutting it, it probably will have layers. I don't know how stable it will be. And what else were we looking at? There's just all kinds of those. These are all obviously chunks of this uh, sedimentary layering around here that has little flat crevices and, and, and areas in it that can fill in with uh, calcif with uh, calciferous drippings, however you want to say that. And um, all of these soft sandstone wore away. And this is what we have left. A lot of it in this gravel bed. Chunks of that, yeah, that's not quartz as we turn it. There's different reflections from the different layers of, uh, of orientated crystal habit in there. Ooh, what are you? That's ridiculous, that's almost turquoise looking. Huh. Which well, definitely got like a manganese green to it. 
or a copper green, some sort of green affecting it. In hopes of uh, cutting, polishing, I'm sure that if you made orbs out of this stuff and marbles, it would have a really cool um, patterning to the whole thing. Is that an agate? That is a little agate. It's kind of a dirty little thing, but that's silicate. Okay, let's bring the bucket over here. I'll set this rock on top so I know I got that far. Turn off. So these are probably uh, reverse prints, you know, places where there was a dent in the mud and then it got filled in. But definitely uh, some trace of something has been preserved in the sandstones or mudstone. Maybe we'll bring that. I don't know if you're going to be able to get the details off of some of these. A little delicate dendritic patterning all through here. Inspecting everything. I'm sure there's 30 things that are right here that I don't quite see what they are, but they're really cool. As things go and they tend to hide. This is a big old biscuit of uh, calcite crystal all orientated up and down direction we'll take that too I'm liking that stuff or at least have a little stockpile of it maybe we'll break some up into specific patterns and then uh, tumble it see how it looks and a little pattern stone Oh, uh, yep, just slab after slab. Just found this. And that might actually be a little fossil of a shrimp or something. Looking pretty complete. Two different colors. A sea scorpion or something, I don't know. Of a little shrimp or something there though. I don't know. You let me know what you think. Is this a is this a shrimp or a crab or something you recognize? I'll put some beauty shots in here. I have to film this. This is Mars's favorite game. He gets a stick and he carries it to the water. He pushes it under the water and then he waits for it to pop up and it's like a surprise. Boop! There it is behind him. And uh, yeah, he can do that for like an hour by himself, just very calmly in one spot. Happy dog. It's gonna be six years old this year. Yep, yep, yep. Big gobs of common opal everywhere here. It's just real motley. It's like the stuff that my house is literally built on a shelf of that. Not exaggerating. And uh, I'll show you, it's super lightweight and plasticky. Breaks all apart. See the silica content in there, the shininess of it all. So those are different greens and grays and browns and yellows and greens. 
but very unstable, very um, fractured, but just big gobs of this. This is like all over throughout here. So it's pretty common in this zone. Question marks, question marks, question marks. Yep. I'm pretty sure that right there is a little mold of a bivalve, a little seashell. And you can see it's, uh, yeah, I'm about 90% sure that it ends there. But yeah, complete mold. So um, the space was left, all organic was gone, and it just filled in with a type of mud, I think. But we're getting all kinds here. Anything could be here. Just wanted to show you this crazy chunk of... Well, I guess a couple chunks of stone. This one has... Let me zoom in. You see this one actually has some... Uh, whole patterning to it that probably occurred when it was a layer of mud. And has been preserved by the next layer laid down on it. And then this... Each one of these being a fine layer of sand, but you can see that this creature got swirled and twirled somehow. At least the layers did when they were soft sand. And, um, and now they have set up into a very swirly chunk of sandstone. Or maybe it's the preserved giant clam. You think that's a giant clam? Yes, it could be, right? They were that big. It's fat on that end. And when you flip it up this way, it has the, kind of that big clam mouth to it. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Collecting these two because I think that they might actually make a real fun little cut. They'll definitely be soft. And uh, they're a harder type of stone. And they sure have some pretty colors going on in there. I'm going to call it a ringed or banded iron stone at this point. This, which could have been something soft trapped by the water and shaped like that, is definitely stone. And it definitely reminds me of an organic shape, whether it was a piece of an old sort of coral or some sort of bone structure that's left. But doesn't it? Also, let me know what you think. Just put in the timestamp, the time in the, uh, the, the video count when you see this. and Let me know what you think. This one's got really cool little patternings. I'm hoping this camera will pick it up. Or I might have to do a beauty shot. Definite little worm patterns. Where they were probably crawling through the mud. Really cool. Um, not moving very far really. Just looking real slow because there's so many different things that could be preserved and ways it could be preserved whether it was print or 3d kind of thinking about the grains of the stones i'm seeing some of them have old sand from old sandy beaches some of them are what are you that's like a clay stone obviously or a finer sandstone spent some time busting open every round sandstone nodule i could see nothing lurking inside so the river is just making them round with its processes here. What are you? Ooh, it's a, uh, I forget what those are called, but that's a good wish stone, right? Where the line goes all the way through. Could be, uh, you know, 
You never know. There's been so many millions of years of life that could be a part of a sea of a creature or a seed of a creature, or you know, maybe that's a a seed that fell off a huge old tree. Who knows? But that's the fun of the unknown. So. I thought that we would do a little bit more unknown than known today because every once in a while I just want to puzzle and ponder and question. Also, I love being a tour guide for things that I've found already, but I also love discovering and making myself look like a fool a little bit. It's all good. Look, so here's some, some uh, sandstone that has little prints of floatsam and jetsam little organic matter that would have been floating and sticking in the mud but usually indicates to me that we're in a location that uh was close enough to shore to probably get some sunlight in the water and have life along with these little imprints of bivalve shells and such so um yeah all really good signs there could be anything anything i tell you Tyrannosaurus rexes that came down to the shoreline to feast on the carcasses of dead whales and then a tidal wave buried them both. And we're gonna find them laying here any minute. Oh yeah, that's a cool one, huh? At least for a yard stone, all the little patterns. Ironstone agates. I bet you a lot of these are. I bet you if you cook a lot of these, you'll get a little iron nugget out of it, too. This one has a cool little detail in the middle of it. It has a uh, stone that is totally separate somehow. And it's a little nodeness, and it's uh, eroding out. Kind of a cool way. Could be a chunk of bone marrow from something big. Or a chunk of old coral or something. It's definitely, uh, it's not a piece of white pumice, but it is stone. It's a lot like a big thick chunk of marrow. There's a big old one of these. The concretions with the iron banding in it. This one's super big and feels compact and heavy. I'm wondering if there aren't really cool windows all in there. So I think we'll bring it home too. Maybe slice this one open. What do you think? As we start to find these, here's some more bivalve imprints here. Here's a full casting of one sticking out. As we start to find more of those, we can kind of uh, keep remembering making mental notes of the color of the rock that they're in. See that? So then you can kind of look for rocks that might be that color of gray and that smoothness. Because some of those pieces fell out and they might still be in good condition here amongst the gravels. And some of them can be totally enriched with calciums and silicates. And uh, it'll also tell us what types of rock to pay more attention to as we go along, too, because a layer of rock can represent a large section of time. And in that large section of time, conditions can change from when there is life to where there isn't life in that chunk of water or vice versa. So... Um, layers above it and below it can be totally devoid of life and then one layer could have had a good couple of thousand or half a million years where it did have a lot of life in it. That's what we're looking for is clues and details. And there's a chunk of old iron in the creek. Look at that. Remember that was. I don't think it's a slab of meteorite, it just looks like one at this point. We'll go ahead and bring that home because it's so cool. Basically just a chunk of pure iron. It's um 
it's all misshapen and stuff. Maybe it's where people cut. There used to be a barn across the road for sure, so I imagine stuff got thrown in the creek. Here's another little iron stone. Here's some more chunks of this common opal, but in cooler colors. This is a blue and a green. Let's see, it's like plasticky and light. That's pretty. Those are the colors that my house is built upon. And here is a big chunk of what's looking to be I would classify this as like a shiny rhyolite. Yeah. Um, could be a chalky or compacted ash except for I believe it ended up being super high silicate um, yeah beautiful blue though on that side it's not really the most stable looking creature Here's a pretty cool little chunk of rock. God's little caverns got lined with a super fine druzy. It also looks like it's a uh, calciferous in nature. All through the whole thing, basically. Honeycombed all of its little fissures. Probably like a a break, a broken up pattern in uh, the sandstone that then got filled and stitched together with this I take these super pitted pieces of steel it's been so worn by the water it's really cool if you uh, wire brush this and then blew it out it just it's a beautiful thing all on its own it's really just rock if you think about it um, just something else that we've taken and melted down and made into a shape but not really any different than working any other type of rock. No half time here in the truck. Took about a 40 minute nap almost. Completely dazed out. Got these guys fed with some food. And the guy's the opposite of Mars, so he's up front cooking in the heat. I got the fan on Mars here to keep a uh, no mini fan keep the flies from landing on his face so he can pass out and we are resting up and then we're going to move up to the next spot and see what we can get thank you for sticking with me this far into the video and good morning afternoon and evening or night it's a mixture of all of this for me right now We would like to invite you to come visit our online treasure shop. In the description below is a link that you can click on which will take you to the store. There you can find all sorts of beautiful rock and mineral specimens, as well as handcrafted jewelry made from our finds on the quest for details and all sorts of other custom creations. Whether you're looking for that special little something for yourself to add to your collection or trying to find the perfect gift for someone else, we have an ever-changing selection of unique and one-of-a-kind items to browse through. And every purchase helps support the Quest for Details channel.